Hello everybody, I see Mike back again bringing you a tutorial on ship designing in the grand strategy game Stellaris. We're going to talk about just a few things that should really help you when you're in game and designing those ships to help you take over the galaxy. First we're going to cover the basics, then we're going to cover the important statistics that really matter, then I'm going to show you how to really design each ship and then how many of each ship for your fleets you should build. And then at the end we'll cover some quick tips that should help you take over the game. Okay, so first things first is the one thing I really want to stress is that you should design the ships yourself. Right here, if you look, there's an auto-complete button. And this will basically take your researched modules and throw them in there automatically based on however the algorithm the computer figures. In my experience, this hasn't gone very well. So I just stress that you should build your own ship, especially after this tutorial, should really help you out in those fights that may be close and give you the edge. So what do you need to know about designing ships? Well, first things first is you need to know that there are three different types of weapons. There's energy weapons, kinetic weapons, and then missiles. Energy weapons are weak against shields, but strong against armor. Kinetic weapons are the opposite. They're strong against shields, but weak against armor. And then missiles they are actually strong against both shields and armor, but the downside is those pesky little point defense systems knock them out pretty easily. So keep that in mind when you're designing your ships. And that is corvettes are easily hit by small weapons and they're harder to hit by large slower weapons because they're more evasive. Destroyers are easily hit by medium and small weapons, but they can take a little bit more damage, but they can also fit a little bit better guns. Cruisers and battleships are slow and are easily hit by everything, but they have more shield and armor to withstand that damage. So what stats are really important? Accuracy, 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 accuracy. If your ships aren't accurate, it doesn't even matter. So make sure that you have high accuracy weapons on any of your designs. Next is your damage per second. And that is how much damage is that ship really doing to your enemies? And here you can look at that damage right here 5.91 per second on this particular ship. Okay, so now that you know what's important, what are the ideal setups for each ship? Well, let's go over them. Corvettes, I like to have four different designs, each with a special focus. First, Corvette is the torpedo class. So let me show you that. Here, I have three small modules at the top, all torpedoes. Then at the bottom, I have two shields and three generators. Now, as you level up, these are going to level up. So you want to make sure that you have a good balance, but as long as you have a positive power, it should work. So you may need to change it up a little bit depending on your research. So keep that in mind. Here on the right, I'll, I have everything maxed out that I have researched so far. So the increased warp drive, which increases a little bit more power usage. If you have wormholes or something, this may not be necessary. For all my Corvettes, because they're an evasive small ship and they really don't do much damage, if you have this research, the combat computer, I like to go ahead and put it in defensive mode so it gives that extra plus 10 evasion. So as you can see, this Corvette and all my Corvettes will have an evasion of 40%, which is the highest of any of my ships. So a real good tip because the Corvettes, their main priority is to basically be decoys. They're going to do a little bit of damage, but mainly they are going to have your enemy shooting at them and missing, and that gives you opportunity for your bigger ships to wield some damage. Okay, so the next is the Corvette Energy Ship. Here, I have a small and a medium module, two lasers, specifically focused with energy. Again, same format, two shields, three generators, and then the same setup here on the right. And then I also have a point defense system. So as we discussed in the beginning, missiles are strong against both shields and armors, but they're weak against these pesky little point defense systems. So that way, if you make sure you have this class in all your fleets, then you're going to be shooting down most of those missiles and they won't even get to your stronger ships, which are actually doing most of your damage for, to your enemy. So here I have the three, module, three small modules. Again, two shields, three generators, same setup. And then lastly, we have the autocannon setup, and this is three small modules, and then the same setup here on the right, pretty self-explanatory. And so what I like to do is just kind of split them evenly, 25%. Sometimes I will go a little bit more towards energy or torpedo, depending on my opponent and who I'm fighting, And uh, but that should give you a good balance on your Corvette fleet to kind of really attack everything. But Corvettes are going to be your bread and butter for your full, full fleet. And so it's really, really critical that you have each of these focuses because it's going to be important. 
Okay, so now that we've talked about Corvettes, let's move on to Destroyers. Destroyers, I've only done three designs, and that's because one of them incorporates the two. And that is the point defense systems and the auto cannons. Three small modules on the left and two on the right. Three on the left are the auto cannons, and two are the point defense systems. So these destroyers are going to help shoot down missiles as well as use the auto cannons, which are strong against armor, as we discussed earlier. Here on the destroyers, I'm able to fit some more shields to give it that extra boost. I didn't really mess with armor just because it still has a low armor rating already, so it's not really going to add that much benefit. I use the armor on the cruisers and more importantly the battleships, and we'll get into that later. But see, I have the the four shields, two medium, three mediums, and a small, and then the rest are these upgraded reactors. Now, as I said, you may have to kind of fiddle with this depending on what you have researched and what actual weapons you have upgraded because they all require different power uses, but this is a good kind of starting uh, point for you guys. Here, uh, I left everything the same as the Corvex, except for I have this set to default. You can switch them. Um, I, I don't think there's any preference. They have a low evasion, so you can go ahead and give it a plus 10. They'll be plus 25. Or if you want them to do a little bit more damage, plus 10. I don't think it makes that big of a difference, but that's something you can kind of play along with. So just like the Corvettes, I have a torpedo class for my destroyers. And the way I have it set up is two mediums and two small ones. And then I have three shields and four generators. And then on the left here, or on the right, I have the same setup, but because I wanted to do more damage, I went ahead and went for the plus 10 here, and so I have a 16.59 damage per second. And then lastly is the energy focus. Four generators, three shields, and then again, the combat bonus. And then here I went a large and a medium, because I wanted this, uh, this destroyer to really be high damage uh, and quick. So here we have a 13 DPS... So, and it's going to be relatively inexpensive compared to the others, if I'm correct. Yeah, 311, 337, so it's a little bit a little bit better. And so that kind of gives you another all-around balanced fleet for your destroyers. So now we'll move on to the cruisers. So the cruisers and the battleships is where you really get to play around, and you have a little bit more wiggle room to kind of make it your own, so to speak. So on this one, I have a large module on the left, three in the middle, and one on the uh, medium on the right. And I did this one, I did like a uh, kind of an auto, I mean, it's just kind of like a balance of all three. So I have a kinetic auto cannon here, and then I have the three shield, or three energy guns in the middle, and then I have the torpedo on the right. So this one is capable of attacking anything that comes its way. It's just an all-around balance type ship, and so I called it the combat ship. Here on the bottom, I was able to fit one, two, three, four, five total shields with only three generators due to the upgrade, and I still have 20 power left. The energy weapons don't require too much, so I was able to do this, and I went ahead and gave it a uh, plus 10 hull points and 10 evade. You can, Again, you can switch it to the combat, whichever is kind of your personal prefer preference. It doesn't really make that big of a difference. Next is one of my favorites. This is the, the bomber for the, the cruiser class. And on the left and right, I have large and medium, kind of similar setup of space torpedoes, though. No auto cannons. And then in the middle, I have the point defense system. So this is going to be a ship that kind of, in retrospect, sits in the back, shoots long-range weapons, aka the torpedoes, has point defense systems to defend against other long-range weapons coming at them, and then it can send out bombers, which will do some damage. And the good thing about these things is they are small, fast and evasive and so these things are hard to shoot down and that's what makes them pretty beneficial to you guys same setup on the bottom here i've got one two three four five shields three generators and i managed to get it at exactly zero power which is awesome here you can see my dps is a whopping 35 per second which is really good so make sure you guys incorporate this in your cruiser classes and then lastly, I have the fighter class, which is basically the same thing as the cruiser, but this time it is all auto cannons and then the fighter, and then the same setup as the bottom. And I still had 15 power left, but a pretty close DPS is the other one, 35-14. And so that kind of gives you another good balance between bomber and fighters. And then everyone's favorite ship, the battleship. And this is really where you can make things your own. There's really no 
perfect way to build a battleship because there's so many options. There's so many modules you can put on. And uh, so I did it without any of the special weapons that you uh, unlock later in the game because I wanted these to kind of be a basis of the early and mid game strategy because later game you have more, um, let's say, leeway to build your ships. So this is a good strategy for the early to mid game, but it also does work late game. You can just, you know, throw in some of the later modules and we'll talk about that a little bit later. But on this one, on this particular battleship, I have two designs. I have the energy shield one and then a carrier. So the energy one is just, I wanted just max, max, max damage. This thing is going to sit in the back and just freaking fire high powered weapons. And I went energy. So they're all large here. You can see I have six large energy weapons on the bottom. All shields now. I don't on this particular playthrough. I didn't really research armor that much, which is why you don't see it on here. But it's very, very viable for you to put armor on there because look, you see we have a 24 rating. So if you put more, it actually will help. Unlike it would on the Corvettes, it wouldn't really make much of a difference. So I on this one, I have five shields and a whole bunch of power generators to to make up the power difference when I have all these large weapons. And then on this one, I have it set to combat because I want that extra bonus. And then actually I need to max that thruster there to give me a little bit of more evasion. And then here I have it on the effect on hostile shits, minus 25% hit points and shield regeneration. You, any one of these will work, but I like this one better for my battleships. And then the last battleship design I have for you guys is called the carrier battleship. And so this one kind of goes into defense. So it has, it's going to sit back as well with your other battleships and it has all the point defense systems. So you don't get nailed with those missiles. It also has auto cannons to do more damage on those shields and then the cool part is it has three hangers and this is what we talked about earlier about getting those small fighters and bombers out that are very evasive and can fly in and really do some damage so if you look i have 72 dps on this thing which is freaking fantastic so this thing can really punch your enemy in the throat here i you can see i kind of played around and did the armor but i don't really have that upgraded so apply would be more beneficial for, beneficial for me to put shields but i wanted to give you guys an example of how you maybe could have put the armor in and so that's what i have here so i have a 33 armor rating and a 550 shield but the main thing is that dps is high at 72 now as i progress further in this game and i unlock you know higher weapons then i can start fitting them on there and really bumping this number up but to give you an example what the armor did here 33 and then i had 550 shields this one i have a thousand on the shield so i get more bang for my buck if i put shields on there since my armor is not that upgraded because it, it just went down 11 went with nine points there so that, that is the basic layouts that I think you guys should kind of stick with, especially early to mid game to really maximize your efficiency and really win those battles that are really close against your enemies. So now before I leave, I want to talk about your ratios. How many of what ship should you build? Well, I think you should kind of balance out each class and make it an even split. So if you're going to build these three cruisers, it should be 33% for the Corvettes, 25%. But for Corvettes in total, here's what I have come up to be kind of the best ratio. So for the very early game, only Corvettes and Destroyers, and I would say about four Corvettes to every Destroyer. You don't need to worry about Cruisers. They're not that useful. I wouldn't even start building Cruisers till I almost unlock Battleships. So you really just need to focus on Corvettes and Destroyers because you don't have that many upgraded modules and your Cruiser's just gonna, just gonna kind of get, uh, you know, killed pretty early on because you don't have much to defend it with. So Corvettes are really useful early game. I would really pretty much almost spam those. Like I said, the ratio of four to one destroyer for every one destroyer you have four Corvettes. So once you start approaching the middle middle game, um, here's the kind of ratio that I think is best fitting. I suggest about 15 Corvettes to every one battleship, seven destroyers to every one battleship and five cruisers to one battleship. So that's 15, seven, five to one battleship. And then late game, this can vary depending on your playthrough. If Once you get down to a few empires and, and they may have, you know, specialized in one area, you may have noticed some trends. You may want to change it up to, to give you that edge. But if you don't know what to do still, then you can still stick to that same ratio and that should get you through. But to make, but you need to make sure you update those modules to those high-end weapons and make sure you're researching those. So just to end this tutorial, I want to give you guys a couple tips to leave you uh, so that way you can really excel out there on the battlefield. So torpedoes and auto cannons are very good early early games, specifically versus the AI. So when it comes to researching, if you have a choice, choose those, especially against AI. Second, 
Upgrade to Archimitters, Lancers, and Disruptors on all your Destroyers, Cruisers, and Battleships during the middle and late game. And I kind of touched on this earlier, but I just want to reiterate that it's very important that you upgrade to those because those are really going to bump up your DPS. Focus research on one to two weapons early on. So like I said, kind of focus on torpedoes and autocannons and get those really high. So that way, you, you know, because each ship is focused. So you could have a really high focus ship or you could have a lot of little focus that aren't going to do much and get swatted down like flies. Ships have limited slots, so you just got to make the best of them. And, and that's why I think that's a good tip. Lastly, AI usually will send high number of corvettes and destroyers with high dodging capabilities. So keep that in mind when you're building your next fleet. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful. If you have any questions or any feedback, leave it in the comment section below. If you liked it and thought it was helpful, hit the like button. And if you want to see more, always subscribe. Thank you guys, and I'll see you next time.